And I'm also a <laughs>
Welcome on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. I am Pastor Jennifer Michael, a pastor here at St. Timothy, and I am grateful to share worship with you. Uh, if you are new here or just uh, coming to worship for the first time, be sure to take a look at the communion instructions that are near the part in the bulletin that talks about communion, so you know how, to, how we do the communion process. And also, there's a little QR code on the back of the bulletin, so if you see that, just scan that code and then you can fill out the, uh, the member, the visitor's form, and we can kind of get to know you and, and such. So let us take a few moments to center our hearts for worship, and then we will begin. I am so grateful, again, to be here with you. Welcome. in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned. sinned. We, we have, have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have afforded your bounty. In, in the name of Jesus, forgive us, us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food, fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We can see it. A reading from Isaiah. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and you labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that do not that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall, and lifts up those who from Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promise. To them belong the patriarchs. And from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Invite the kids to come forward. I think 
everybody can see how, how special you are today. Yes, definitely. We're all special. But I have a question for you. Do any of you know what the Lord's Prayer is? Have you ever heard of it? Do you know anything about it? We say it every, every Sunday, right before communion. It starts with our Father who art in heaven. Right? So there's that. That's the Lord's Prayer. And it's the prayer that Jesus taught us during the Last Supper. So it's a prayer that Jesus wanted to, to start out that holy meal because uh, it, helps, it helps us. But Martin Luther, actually, that, Martin Luther thought that the Lord's Prayer was actually the best prayer you could ever pray. Because whenever you, if you're sad or you're scared or you don't know what even to pray for, Luther says that everything you need to pray for is in that prayer. So if you don't know anything else, just pray the Lord's Prayer and all will be, all will be good. So in that prayer is a phrase called, give us this day our daily bread. So what do you think that means? Come on, work with me, bro. <laughs> what do you think that means? Anybody else? Yes. Okay, give us this day. Okay. Our daily bread. Anybody else? Since I got cricket. What? Provisions. Provisions? Okay, that's a good one. What do you think? You don't want to put on the spot. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I wouldn't either. Well, it, mean, it does mean all those things, but it means other stuff too. Even Martin Luther in his small catechism, he said daily bread included lots of things. Uh, necessities and nourishment for our bodies like food and drink and clothing and shoes and earrings and, and all kinds of like this fancy shoes and then a princess scepter. God provides that for us too. God also provides for us law and order, stuff that's good for us. And so we say give us this day our daily bread. We're talking about all those things because we know that that's what God is going to provide for us. So it means that God provides no matter what, no matter what we do, when we say that prayer, we're, we are absolutely claiming that God's going to do that for us. And it doesn't mean that we only pray that for ourselves. It also means that we pray it for other people as well. So when we say, give us, give us this day our daily bread, so it's not just for me, it's for all of us. And so we're praying for everybody to have what they need so that if there's somebody who's hungry or there's somebody who wants for something, they, they can receive it too. And so it's really important to kind of remember that when we say those prayers, that we don't just mean it for us, we mean it for everybody. And we can trust in God to give it to everybody. So because Jesus loved us first, then now we can love people in turn. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. So let's say a prayer. Ready? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, thank you for Jesus. Who teaches us, who teaches us to, ask for what we need, to ask for what we need, but to also pray for the needs of others. So that, all so that all may be lifted up and know your grace. Amen. Okay, thank you very much. That was fun. by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, 
We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Maybe it was the size of the crowd on hand to see. Maybe it was the wow factor. Maybe it was the importance of the event that in Jesus' ministry. But whatever it was, none of the Gospels missed it. The familiar story of the feeding of the 5,000 in our Gospel text today is the only one of Jesus' miracles that is recounted in all four Gospels. The consistent retelling of this story across all the Gospels, all, all the Gospel accounts, shows us clearly that this is a memory of deep significance to the early church. Apparently, they viewed it as a memory too important to ever be forgotten. But the way this story is often viewed in our modern context is more like a circus sideshow of stunning proportions. Step right up, people, to see the one and only Jesus perform miracles. You thought turning water into wine was impressive. Wait until you see him feed 5,000 people with just two loaves and five, five, two fish and five loaves. Sort of, I don't know about you, but I don't know if you remember David Copperfield making the Statue of Liberty disappear on live TV. We watch these magicians and then are astonished that such an amazing feat could even be possible. However, this story of feeding the 5,000 is not some flashy sleight of hand. Sorry, Alan. <laughs> there is more to be revealed in this story than simply Jesus showing off his mad skills of divinity as the Son of God. Unlike us today, the community of early Christians that would have heard first this story would have seen the account of a miracle to be rather routine. They were already regularly exposed to people claiming to perform wondrous acts and miracles. Jesus wasn't the only one living in the first century that people claimed was, was working wonders. Nor was he the only one that people hailed as a messiah. He wasn't even the only one to claim to be the Son of God. Most of the Caesars of the Roman <coughs> Empire did that too. Add to that, the Gospel of Matthew tells us in the first chapter that God, uh, that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. So if these early Christians believed that this was true, then they would have also thought that one, the one who made the world out of nothing and created light from darkness Multiplying a few fish and a, some loaves of bread was no major deal. Thus, we can be certain that it wasn't the miracle of feeding 5,000 that would be grabbing the attention of the crowd. Neither Jesus nor his early followers imagined that stories of incredible acts would convince people of Jesus' divine origins. So what was the point of telling this tale? I think at the heart of this message from the gospel today and to the, is that the early Christians, and now also us, the point of telling about this amazing miracle isn't to illustrate what Jesus does, but instead to answer the question of why. This wasn't about announcing that Jesus could perform miracles. Rather, the wonders Jesus performed were signs of the character of God, whose presence Jesus embodied. The nature of God Jesus reveals in this feeding of the 5,000, and what it represents is captured in a very in one single word, compassion. 
The Gospel says, When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. Jesus saw the needs of the people and tended to them, shared with them his presence, and he fed them. In the first century, you know, gods aren't normally supposed to care about people like the crowds. The gods of the ancient philosophers, for instance, were considered objective and above it all, with no concern for humanity. And then at the other end of the spectrum, the gods of the Greek and Roman empires were notorious for using humans as playthings and for ordering the world about on their whims. At best, gods were supposed to take the side of the rich and the powerful, sanctioning the exploitation of the poor and the downtrodden. They were definitely not known for siding with the oppressed, the ordinary, or the hungry. And yet, that's what happens here as Jesus renews, embodies, and fulfills the consistent call of the God of Israel to feed the hungry. Make no mistake, this was no minor endeavor. As what we now call food scarcity wasn't only known in the ancient world, it was widespread. And so the disciples' suggestion that these hordes of people go buy food isn't just unrealistic, they are, after all, in a very deserted place. It's ridiculous. And even a little insulting, as the folks making up these desperate crowds probably didn't have money to buy food in the first place. And so Jesus tells his disciples to get over their callous self-concern and feed the people themselves. Which, and that brings me to the second part of this story that you might have overlooked. It's not Jesus who feeds the crowd. Jesus uses the disciples. If, even when they would rather look after themselves, Jesus turns to his disciples and asks them to tend to the needs of the thousands of men, women, and children. Matthew's account has the disciples respond to Jesus in a matter-of-fact way. They simply give a factual account that they have limited provisions. But the account of this story in Mark, Luke, and John emphasize in varying ways the sarcastic skepticism of the disciples. In Mark, they say, are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? In Luke, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. And in John, they declare, six months of wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. But in Matthew, they simply report, we have nothing here but five, five loaves and two fish. To which Jesus responds, bring them to me. You see, there's this ongoing tension here. Big crowds of people with unmet needs is overwhelming to the disciples. If, if there had been six people following Jesus when it came time to eat, then the disciples, the, then a disciple might have thought, okay, there's enough that I can do something here. But a whole crowd of that magnitude with unmet need is soul crushing. Send the crowds away may be the phrase of confessing powerlessness in the face of this kind of large-scale need, as well as getting the obvious need out of sight. But again, the real miracle of this story is how Jesus reveals the character of God. The disciples feel overwhelmed and unprepared. The task of feeding so many hungry people seems daunting. They want the unmet need to go away, and yet their Lord responds by drawing nearer to that need. While it is clearly a miracle from Jesus that provided the sustenance to feed these 5,000 people, the call to the disciples that day was to actively participate in, the, in distributing that miracle. 
Jesus made clear that this, his call to discipleship was not meant to be a call of passive piety. Them watching Jesus perform miracles. Them watching Jesus do all the work. No. This call to discipleship was a call to active ministry, to meet real human need. In our gospel today, Jesus feeds the twelve, and then the twelve feed the five thousand. And thus, whatever initial skepticism or doubt, the disciples are caught up in Jesus' words of abundance and gratitude and distribute what they have and participate in the wonder and joy that all, that all ate and all were filled. God used even these reluctant disciples to care for the poor and the hungry that God loves so much. So to me... That seems that the purpose of today's gospel reading is not just a chance for us to hear about Jesus performing a really cool trick. It is a reminder to all of us that we, too, are called to engage in a discipleship that is active and engaged. We stand in the shoes of the disciples in Matthew's account, and Jesus is asking us to obey his daring, ridiculous command to offer what we have. And Jesus will do the rest. But surrounded by a mountain of human need from every corner, it may seem daunting to think we might make any difference at all with what little we have. With the disciples, we say, this is a deserted place, and the hour is late. We are reluctant and sometimes feel our only option is to sit comfortably in our pew and try not to to see the needs of the world outside those doors, to focus on what is needed within the church walls of St. Timothy, and to ignore the challenge of the gospel to turn ourselves outward. What other choice do we have? Because we do not have the resources to meet our own needs, let alone the needs of others. And yet, this story reminds us that we are called to offer our own version of two fish and five loaves, limited resources offered to Jesus for him to bless and multiply. This is not to say that we are failing to fulfill that call in some way It was with the current outreach ministries that we have. I mean, we support, as the people of St. Timothy, with our contributions to Room in the Inn, Sumner County Resource Center, and Gallatin Shares, to name just a few. We also provide unpressured space and and a safe space for organizations like PFLAG, Moms Demand Action, and Alcoholics Anonymous. Just like the disciples, through these gifts, we can be caught up in Jesus' words of abundance and gratitude, and we can rush to distribute what we have, participating in the wonder and joy that all ate and were filled. We have limited resources as one. But when we come together, there is a bounty. There is an abundance. Jesus calls us into service, and we accept that call of responsibility. We we do not hoard the resources for ourselves, but instead we distribute them to others. Resources like money and possessions, but also resources of time and energy, innate abilities, and acquired skills you didn't even know you had that ability to do. All of that has value. Just like these early Christians who wrote this story in every gospel account as a deeply significant memory, for us it is also a story that should never be forgotten. It should be told again and again and again. Remember that one word, compassion. Jesus had compassion for the crowd that gathered with unmet needs, and and also he has compassion for all of you. The one word reveals exactly who God is through Jesus Christ, who God is when you come to this table. Jesus comes to you in your need because of God's love for you, so that you may be freed to serve the needs of others and to show God's love to them. The events that took place on that hillside in Galilee 2,000 years ago were a miracle to 5,000 people assembled there that day. 
However, the deeper message that we can take with us this week as we go out is the miracle of God's love for the six billion people on our planet today. We are called to be partners in that miracle. Partners with God in making the fullness of life become a reality today in this world that God loves so much. So, I ask you this one question. In what ways will you use your blessed nourishment that you receive today? And how will you pass it on? Spirit, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the Church, those in need, and all of creation. Cherish your creation from the smallest microbe to the largest mountain. Protect fragile ecosystems, send favorable weather, supply food and water to nourish creatures, and raise up to care for all you have created. You desire peace and justice in the world. Instill within all political leaders your desire. Support the work of international peace organizations and provide relief for those in war-torn areas, especially in Ukraine, Afghanistan, Colombia, and Central African Republic. those who are alone, heal those who are sick, provide for all who hunger or thirst, console the bereaved, bring joy to the sorrowful, and attend to all who call on you, especially the family of Rosemary Davis, Beth Devlin, Carolyn Scott, the family of Hank Oysters, Christ Lutheran Church in Shelbyville and their pastor Rick Stevenson, Mark, Sandy, Ed, Linda, Sally, Terry, Claude, David, Paul, Charlene, Ted, Sherry, Karen, Richard, Jane, Rod, Dave, Evelyn, Sandra, Fred, Cheryl, John, Carol, Scott, Joanne, Steve, Elaine, and Sue Ellen. And all the, and those we name aloud now or in the silence of our hearts. The assembly is invited at this time to present other petitions. before us examples of faith living who have witnessed to your promises throughout time and space. Rouse us by their lives of service and dedication to be your hands and feet in this world. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Let's pass the peace. <laughs>
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is, my, is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, his, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty <coughs> Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Uh, one, you may have heard uh, the name Carolyn Scott mentioned in our prayers uh, today. That was not printed in the bulletin. That is my mother. She is in the hospital overnight. Uh, she was um, suffering this week from what they think now is a cluster headache. And so the neurologist has been coming in, is going to come in today. I don't have any updates, but she's stable and she's okay, but just suffering in a lot of pain. So please keep her in your prayers this week as they try to figure out uh, what is, what is uh, going to work best for her. It's not, she's never been hospitalized since she had my sister Susanna, and my sister is like 48 years old. So that's a pretty good track record for someone who's 85. So uh, I think that um, it's a little bit of a shock for her, so it's been a little bit worrisome for me too to try and be from, from a distance. My, she, two of my sisters live down there, so there's nothing I can do, but yes, please keep her in, our, in your prayers. But we have, lots of, we have lots of good announcements, happy announcements. Uh, we have our Road Warriors are coming up, so Baker, you got your vests and all that. You're ready to sign up. Anybody who will, anybody, if you, if you, even if you can't pick up trash, you can come and have a good time. It is, it is, I mean, it, it is really funny that we're, you know, we're stand, we're running along the road and hopefully it'll be an overcast day, not too sunny, not too, not too warm, but not too, not too rainy. So, but that's on the... I know I saw the, the date, it's coming up soon, August 19th, on a Saturday at 8 o'clock, come to the back parking lot, you'll get a, some gloves, you'll get a, a vest, and uh, a lot of thank you from our community. It's a wonderful way that we can claim the space that's out in front of our church in a positive way that the community can uh, be served, and that's another one of our, our calls as Lutherans, Lutherans uh, and Jesus' as disciples to turn ourselves outward to our neighbor. Uh, we have Youth and Families Cookout. I just found out about that, so I'm excited about that. That's going to be on the, on the 13th, of, uh, sun, the 13th of August at, from noon to 2. Is that here at the church? Because I didn't see that. I don't see. Yes. Yes, it's here at the church? Okay, so here at the church. And so bring a, bring a side or a dessert to share. Of course, we have the new mailing address. Please keep that, uh, keep that there. We have one more faith formation class next week. We're going to do it on the Lord's Prayer. So if you missed that. Uh, one week, uh, when I gave the class a few, uh, several months ago, you can join us. It's at 9 o'clock in the library. Uh, we have a couple of people who will be out, so uh, we'll have a couple of extra seats. So if you'd like to join us, please do. And the parents' night out. We have so, we have so much fun. And Kate is going to come up to the, to the lectern and give us a little bit of a shout-out uh, for all of, all of the people that have, were involved. It was super fun. I had a great time with the kids. I helped them make their name tags and stuff. So it was really fun. How about you, yes. Kate? Hi. <laughs> I only see one child who was with us, and she's in the nursery, right? Avery. Avery was hysterical. She, um, Mr. Phil, Mr. Jeff. Jones said she won't eat pizza. She ate three pieces of pizza. <laughs> so we had 13 children. I would like for Melanie, Melissa, Janet, Carol, Cheryl, Dorothy. I want you to stand up. Stand up, people.
Even if you don't have a skill, it's really fun. <laughs> and so that leads me to next weekend with the youth. If you want to know which kids, which kids are the best It was a super fun, not fun evening, and uh, we even said a, we even said the Superman prayer before we before we uh, before we had before we had dinner. And if you don't know what that is, it's uh, you, you have to come to the next one because I'm not going to do I'm not going to perform it for you. But it's a very fun. Prayer. It's it's very interactive. It's the only interactive prayer I know, but it's really fun. okay. So, any other announcements for the life of the congregation? That was a doozy. I really enjoyed that. That was stuff. Yeah. No, no, no. And people are excited to see it. It's, it's, it's life, it's joy in the church. And so we're happy to hear all of that. So please rise for the blessing because we are so blessed. Wait a minute. Oh. Is, is there another announcement? There is, um, there is. No. She's in the nursery. She's in the nursery. Meredith. Yeah, Meredith. Melvin helped as well. So. All right. Please rise for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Thank you. 